and then I'm going to start from there. So we're excited today to um, offer Coach Connect and um, Blue Health Coaching and the opportunity to have a toe in the water. This is a topic for me that is um, I'm very passionate about. Um, Shelly and I have connected for many years. We've actually worked together in side corporate organizations in the past, as well as side by side in many um, activities and events and coaching over um, many years. This is a passion that we have that connects us together. Um, I do a lot around um, uh, around the water and around ripples, and um, Shelly brings in the Blue Health Coaching and that component of it to really connect what um, integrates a lot of principles of not only leadership development, but human development. And humans are really inherently connected to water. And Shelly will talk about that in a lot more detail as she goes through her presentation. But um, as Shelly's even educated me on some of the connections of developing that mindset and that soul set for us to connect to the water and how it can really be transformational for ourselves, but also our coaching practices. And so we're going to go into some detail to understand the um, Blue Health Coaching and how it can influence us and our clients. We're going to talk about some of the neuroscience behind it and then some of the insights on how you can integrate it into not only your own practice, but also into um, the lives of your clients as well. So as I said, Shelly and I have worked together um, on multiple occasions. She's spent over 20 years in corporate learning and development, and she really works with guiding the next generation of leaders as they take their potential to the next level. And as a certified um, coach through ICF, as well as Blue Health Coaching, she specializes on helping her clients really navigate that complex change <laughs> while reconnecting to what's most important and most meaningful to them. Um, she has a master's in instructional design. She's in the process of pursuing her PhD in organizational development and change. And then for fun, she takes her love for water and her passion for water into scuba diving and um, tons of marine conservation as a master scuba diver. So those are some really cool things that connect um, Shelly to kind of the things that we do in um, our world of coaching together as well. So I'm going to unshare my screen and turn it over to Shelly and um, let her take the floor. Welcome, Shelly. Thank you so much. I apologize as soon as the microphone comes to my way. We have a flyover. I'm just outside of Luke Air Force Base, and so you're having a little bit of background noise from the jets. Apologize for that. Anyway, it's an honor and privilege to get to be here with you today. I always have so much fun with Denise, and we have multiple conversations about water and coaching and leadership and impact and something we're, we're both very passionate about. So I propose that this will be less of a formal presentation and more of a dialogue, more of a conversation with you and with Denise uh, about this concept of blue health coaching. So I'm curious, I'm seeing a couple of people um, still joining the waiting room as well. So we'll continue to welcome them and, and as soon as they join us. Um, but in the chat, I'll invite you, when you registered for this session, I'm curious, what intrigued you about the topic of blue health coaching? So let's see what people have to say. Welcome to those of you who've just joined us. We've just kicked off our conversation. I'm inviting you to share in chat what intrigues you about this topic of blue health coaching. And I'll, I'll just keep going while you type into chat what your thoughts are. 
Um, Denise, when you and I talked uh, recently about this conversation, we really got into a conversation about space and the environment of coaching. And so that was one of the topics we wanted to talk about today and why this is so important. You know, one of the ICF competencies is around cr creating the sense of space and it's the coaching mindset. There's two different competencies. So how do we use our space, whether it's virtual like we have today or in person in a real setting by water, how do we use that sense of space and timing in our, con in our co coaching conversations? So, Denise, did you want to share a little bit about what your thoughts were when we talked about? I, I will. You know, the one thing that I think is interesting is, um, and I, I know you'll get to this in the the presentation and conversation in just a bit um, about where where what water means to us and where we where we kind of connect with water. But that's the one thing that um, I think of when I think of, of this topic is um, my entire life, whether it was a swimming pool or a lake or an ocean or a beach or diving or fishing. I mean, I have spent tons of time on the water. And when I'm not close to the water, um, I, I, there's a void sometimes. Maybe I don't know exactly what that void is, but I do know that it is there. And so um, being connected and staying connected to water, um, I didn't realize that it was such, that there was a reason behind why it felt so good and why I made that connection. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm seeing a lot of head nodding among the group as well. People have a natural connection to water. And that's what a lot of the research and theory behind this concept, this modality of coaching is all about. It, there is research, scientific and neurological research around the benefits of being by water. And a friend and colleague of mine has published a book called Blue Minds. You might be familiar with this. Uh, Wallace J. Nichols. Yep, some people are familiar. Awesome. So that's one publication that encapsulates the benefits and why we're drawn, the curiosity we have about water as human beings. Um, we take vacation to tropical, our tropical destinations frequently are the most expensive. Um, homes that are on the water or near the water by, you know, in the seaside town, for example, tend to be, have a little higher property values. And there's something about that being drawn to water that's natural, innate, and um, really resonates inside us. And so in, in this book, uh, Wallace J. Nichols writes about um, red mind, which we can probably really relate to, and blue mind, and what happens in between. So red mind is this constant state of being frenetic, stressed, chaos. Um, sometimes we, we see this with our clients when they're navigating change, complexity, challenge, conflict, and such. And so when a little bit of that is natural and normal and healthy, so a little bit of stress can sometimes help us to achieve our goals, help us get excited and get out of the way of danger if necessary, that adrenaline rush. But it's not, it's not healthy for us to live in that steady state of red mind. And so what happens over time in the brain, and they actually have MRI images of the brain under red mind. And what happens over time with prolonged amounts of time under stress, the brain actually turns gray. There's, it becomes gray mind, literally. And so those neurons that are firing literally begin to burn out. And so the research shows that when those individuals that have that heightened level of stress are exposed to places of water um, or Im even images of water or sounds of water, not, we have a fountain in the backyard that just trickles that little bit of cascading noise. My favorite white noise when I'm doing work or studying is, is the sound of water or waves crashing on the beach. It's just very soothing and comforting. And so even just those little micro moments of blue can transport us to the places of water and it helps to restore and refresh and renew our mind. And so again, this is part of the, the research and philosophy behind it. 
uh, behind Blue Health Coaching specifically. So coaching, the coaching element of Blue Health was developed by a friend and colleague of mine who's in the UK. And like us, she has had 20 years or lots of years of experience in, in London, working with executives in large organizations as a coach. And she moved to the Cornwall, the Cornish coast in Cornwall and um, began walk, taking her clients. She would have executive clients come out to the beach in Cornwall and they would walk together on the beach for their coaching sessions. And she began to notice that the conversations they were having were different. Not only because the client, the executive leader she was coaching was not in the office, not in the normal space of hustle and bustle of the city. So they were in a different location, but also they were in a different mindset, they had a different headspace. And so the conversations began to change. And she actually did some graduate level research around ambiguity. And she was looking at the ambiguity in nature and specifically the ambiguity that happens in what we call the littoral zone, that, that place between the sea and land. And so there's, it's, it's literally, literally and literally <laughs> this place of ambiguity. Um, and so exploring complexity and exploring ambiguity in life and in our careers and in our leadership in that space where the tide is coming in and washing back and forth. And you have all of the sights and sounds and, and not only that, but the fresh air and the ions that come from the ocean. So you have the physical well-being, you have the mental well-being, you have that emotional release that comes just from taking that first breath by the seaside. Uh, all of these things are coming together to support the coaching that's taking place in the conversation. So it's a beautiful sort of confluence of all of these different types of research. No, that's, um, I, I love hearing the, the stories and the research behind it because that just gives it such, um, you know, like I said, I feel the difference and I feel better, but is it just me or is there really data behind it? And so knowing that there's research behind it is, is really helpful and it connects to um, overall health and well-being. Um, anything that you have on longevity studies of the Blue Zone Health? Huh, that's a good point. So that research is coming forward now. So Blue Mind was published in 2014, and there have been a number of different types of studies of um, the impact on health and wellness and well-being, and also just effectiveness as a human being and as a leader. So there have been different types of studies since, really since that time. Um, we have seen research on the benefits of being in nature. So green space, I would extend this to green space. We're talking about blue space today, really, in particular. But we know that there is benefit from being in nature. Um, I think that the research is still too new to have really long-term longitudinal studies. But if you think about your own experience, when was the first time you had joy or love or play by the water or in the water, near the water, you know, how, think about how soothing um, it is to take a shower on a hot day, you know, that's water, that's the benefit of water. So if you think about the, all of those, even just very natural benefits, um, you know, some of that, like I said, some of that research is still coming forward. I know there's one study that um, someone is doing a study on veterans, military veterans, and also um, sort of paramilitary organizations. So fire departments, police departments, people like in those types of professions. Um, and those who have experienced trauma in their line of work. And so being exposed to surfing and the benefits of surfing. And so there are lots of stories about veterans who were suicidal and then went on this retreat, which is very designed with clear intention about getting close to water. Wow. And the, you know, this person tells the story of how that experience helped him not commit suicide. You know, he formed connections with other people. He saw that there was value and benefit in, in his life. And so it changed his trajectory in many, in a very clear way. 
That's, that's so, beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, sorry. You, you know, one of the things, you know, you, you said your first memory of water and what's really interesting is my, my thought when you said that was, I'm sure most of us don't truly have a memory. I just see a bunch of little bitty kids, just, I mean, babies just, you know, splashing the water everywhere um, because that's what um, little babies do. And so um, I thought that was just an interesting connection of the memory, maybe not even being there, but the joy certainly was. Um, and so what that really, really brings me to, Shelly, is, is what, what is your story? Where did you connect with water in the beginning and um, what got you to this journey of Blue Health Coaching as well as um, maybe some of your scuba? <laughs> yeah, uh, th happy to share that story. Thank you for asking. Um, yeah, I've always been a water baby. Uh, in fact, my mom tells the story that we, my first time fishing was in utero. So <laughs> I've been around water all my life, born and raised in Northern California on the, on the San Joaquin Delta. And so always in, on, around the water um, growing up. And so that's a place of home for me. Just there's a natural connection. We've always been around the water. Now, if you fast forward that and I, you know, graduated from college and went to work and I spent 20 years working in org development, as Tanise said earlier, and really was looking for a way to integrate my love for the water and this desire to be more fulfilled and satisfied and have a deeper connection with sort of life and purpose we all get to that place of mid midlife evalu evaluation. And so some of these questions were coming to mind at the time. And I encountered my colleague, Lizzie La Labalastier, who I mentioned earlier. She uh, and I met and we started talking about, hey, are you a coach? I'm a coach. Let's talk about coaching, right? As you know how those conversations go. And so she started telling me this story of how she's doing, how she coaches along the seashore. And Great, I'm seeing lots of really cool articles being dropped in chat. Keep them coming, that's great. I'll share a couple of more resources as follow-up as well. So anyway, Lizzie and I started talking and I said, you know, that's a practice that a lot of people would really benefit. And I said, I, I can see how, how my clients would benefit, but I'm not sure how I would make that work. You know, I was seeing, this is my professional coaching career and life over here. And this is my love for water and and passion for the ocean and ocean advocacy and marine science and all that good stuff. Um, and for scuba diving, I, it was about the same time actually I was getting certified as a scuba diver. Well, of course, as an OD professional, right? If I love it and have passion for it, I've got to teach it. <laughs> so I became a, a scuba instructor in the process. And so the more and more I went down both of these sort of parallel paths, the closer and closer they became to intertwining with each other. And so as Lizzie and I continued talking over the time, she began developing this Blue Health Coaching as a truly um, sort of a legitimate training practice. And, and it's, it's a modality of, so I'll define it this way. Blue Health Coaching is a modality that can be integrated into any coaching practice that you have. So it has to do with time and place, which we talked about a little bit, we touched on earlier, we didn't get into it deeply, but so time and place, but it also has to do with the somatics of coaching, the somatics of time and place, as well as getting, so getting in touch with your body, mind, spirit, your whole self, which I love, that's what I love about this modality is, you know, we, we coach leaders, we coach entrepreneurs, we coach whoever our target audience is, but we're coaching a whole person. We're not just coaching this little slice of who they are. We're coaching the whole person. So helping them to see that congruence between the different parts of who they are is really integral as well. So I'm sort of ebbing and flowing with this conversation. Denise, I'm going to need you to help me stay on track. <laughs> oh, you're muted. I'm sorry. You are great on time and okay. um, I'll move you along if we need to. Okay, great. I trust that. I, I know that about you and I trust that. So let me also add that um, Blue Health Coaching is rooted in neurolinguistic science 
as well as multiple braining integration techniques. And so MBIT for short is that integration of head, heart, and gut in decision-making, in knowing an answer, right? Finding solutions, which is what coaching is all about, helping our clients to find those answers inside themselves. And so again, it's that integration of head, heart, and gut in connection with time and place to explore ambiguity and transition and transformation or whatever types of topics your coaches might or your clients might bring to you as a coach. So when you think about, um, you know, time and space, tell us a little bit more about time and space. Well, when you schedule a coaching conversation with a client, it's, it's one thing to say, okay, at three o'clock today, we'll have this conversation and we'll connect on Zoom, which has been our life for the last year or the whatever technology you're using, or we'll meet in this coffee shop under normal circumstances. Um, so there, there's, there's that, certainly. Um, when you're walking by the seashore, for example, it's different. It's not just about convenience. It's about getting to the time and place. It's about the transition from where you, where the client was in their home location or their office location and moving to this other place. So there's something that happens in our minds when, when we make that intentional move. In addition to that, when you're planning a session to do Blue Health Coaching on the seashore, you need to be mindful of things like tides and times and weather patterns and conditions and you know what's what's the ocean doing today <laughs> and what other risk factors might be there what are the considerations so so time and space but that's also a really good metaphor that you can leverage in your coaching so for example i had an when i had the opportunity to do my blue health coaching certification was last february in cornwall in Feb yeah, in February. So it was very chilly. It was brisk. I'll call it brisk. And we had the opportunity to do some coaching and experience some coaching. And at one point in time, the person I was working with was exploring this. She was describing it as feeling boxed in, in her, in her situation. And at the same time, we noticed that the tide was starting to come in and we were in this little cove. And so for very practical reasons, we needed to make decisions about what are we going to do? <laughs> are we going to stay in this little cove and have the tide come in? Or will we move? And so we started exploring, how is this like your situation of feeling boxed in? And what she came forward with was a, just a really beautiful example of, you know, I see the waves coming in and out and I have to time it just right to be able to plan my escape. And so in, it turns out, ultimately, that is what she did. She started beginning to think about an exit strategy for her situation. So, but that metaphor was just really timely and beautiful and relevant for the conversation. So tell me a little bit about the, the potential use of that type of metaphor. Um, if you're sitting in an office and across the table from your client, who refers to being boxed in. Is that a place for it as well? Well, so, excuse me. I think if it comes up naturally in the conversation, right, you would, I would never want to insert my own language into the conversation. Um, however, I find that these metaphors do emerge. And of course, I've got background noise, apologize. So these metaphors do emerge naturally. Again, I wouldn't want it to be forced, but frequently my clients know this is part of my modality and this is part of the service they could sign up for, um, that we intend very intentionally, very clearly call it Blue Health Coaching and they can sign up for that. In addition, my clients know that this is part of who I am, it's part of how I speak and it's part of what I do. If you go to my website, it's covered with all kinds of images of water. And so inherently that language of water comes into the dialogue. Now it didn't always when I was coaching in an office, 
or in when I was meeting clients in their workspace. It doesn't always naturally come up. But, you know, like in any of the ICF competencies, you want to be mindful of reflecting the client's language. And, you know, if there's an opportunity to use that or pull that in, um, <laughs> I have a couple of tools here that came as part of my, um, my Blue Health Coaching certification. I do have little question cards. So I have these little question cards like this one. And um, so, actually, I'm gonna choose a different one. So these little cards, they have little questions on them. So, so floating ideas can be like, what are, what can floating ideas? Um, streams of consciousness, right? Ripples of impact, um, a drop of, of change, you know, one drop of a suggestion, a toe in the water. Right, so all of these different, it's about the words we choose and the language that we integrate, but it's very intentional, right? So we don't wanna just randomly insert language into the conversation, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Right, right. No, that's, that's um, I, I, as Aurora said, the, the power of a metaphor is exactly <laughs> it. And, and when that time um, uh, surfaces within the conversation that we're having. Um, you talked a little bit about imagery or visions a little bit earlier. Um, can you connect us a little bit to um, visions or imagery from a, a Blue Health coaching perspective or from our own perspective? Yeah, of course, I'm standing right in the front of it. So this is one of the images I use frequently, and you'll probably see this in any slide deck I, I present. But this image is all about impact. Wait, what impact do you want to have? And, and every little drop um, has an impact. And so you can either be intentional about that impact or you can be accidental and, and see what happens. Um, and so I coach leaders to be intentional about what they want that drop. What, what kind of drop will they drop to manage and be, again, be thoughtful and intentional, purposeful about what they want the impact to be and what legacy that impact over time creates. And so this is one of those images I use frequently. Um, similarly, I use this one a lot, partly as a scuba diver, this is my place of comfort. Now, I got feedback recently that that's terrifying for me. <laughs> this idea of being underwater was terrifying for this particular individual. So I learned something from that. Okay, fine. I, I thank you for that feedback. And um, tell me about that. You know, what is it about this that terrifies you? Help me understand. Um, again, I think that any of these kinds of images, this is this one of the standard images, just having this kind of thing. So I went through my certification last February. <laughs> I was literally on the, in the airport getting ready to fly home and they started canceling flights from Hong Kong and from China. And then all kinds of flights were beginning to be canceled. And so long story short, it was two weeks later that basically the world was shut down due to COVID-19. And we all went to shelter in place. And so most of my coaching over the last year, like many of you, has been virtually. So it is not unusual for me to have a, an image like this be a backdrop. If I know somebody is working through a particular situation, I might have an image like this. So this is the one I use when we're looking for, where is this path leading you? You know, where, what's on the horizon? I ask that one a lot and I use this image for that. You know, what is on the horizon for you? What is that about for you? You know. Tell me more about that. The beautiful thing about a horizon is it can be a near-term horizon. It can be immediately in front of you, or it can be decades out. Yeah, wonderful. So um, Shelly's given us a, a, a great perspective of Blue Mind Coaching and her, you know, her experience. What questions do you have Um for Shelly, at this point in time, um, we'll pause for some, some questions. You can unmute. We're a small group. I would love for you to unmute, but um, feel free to drop it in the chat as well. 
Yeah, I see a master scuba diver sharing an experience. This is Leslie. So it sounds like if I'm understanding right, um, you're using the, the idea of water as a metaphor um, yeah. uh, for all kinds of situations where it might fit in your coaching. Am I, am I understanding right? That's, that's a good summary, yeah. Okay. That's right. Now, one church, what to expect coming in. So that, that's an interesting approach. And like you said, lots of metaphors. <laughs> yeah, lots of metaphors. And what's nice about it is it's a natural environment that people connect with really quickly. Sure. Yeah, and very easily, very readily. We all have a story about water. And this story sounds, um, you know, concerning as well. So I'm reading what's in the chat. Uh, the panic attack. Who, who wrote this? Oh, is this Aurora? I did. Yeah. yeah. I see more about that. Yeah. So just so that um, for when people listen to this later, what I posted in the chat is that I'm also a master scuba diver. I scuba dived for years and I loved it. And 20 years later, I find myself in, yes, I love it. Um, <laughs> I, that does not scare me at all. Pictures of the ocean being 20 feet. I don't think that the farthest depth I've ever been is 100 feet. Um, and so I'm in a kayak in the middle of the ocean and all of a sudden I have this panic attack and I'm saying to myself, what in the world is going on? I'm used to water. I love water. I know how to swim. Um, and so I don't tell my, my family and, and we're continuing to go from one little tiny, uh, island to, an to another. It's close by. Mm -hmm. And my question to you is how do you coach clients that perhaps they're in the moment they're experiencing a panic attack? Cause it's real for me. It was everything that I could do to not um, let the fear consume me, but instead stay focused on how I was me and my son, we're going to get to the next little Island. Yeah, that's a great question. And thank you for sharing your story also. So, I'm thinking about this from the coaching perspective as I would as an instructor of rescue divers as well, or rescuing a, a diver. And the first thing we say is stop, breathe, think, now do whatever you need to do, right? And I would have this in my mind as I'm coaching the individual. Okay, the person needs to just stop, Okay, let's pause. Maybe let's take a deep breath. Well, I can see that you're really upset about this or panicked or whatever the language might be. It's all good. You know, what's happening for you and just getting them to name it and then move forward with the coaching like you normally would. But just that opportunity to stop, take a deep breath, get oxygen to the brain, which we know helps. Okay, now let's let's think about what's going on for you and what do you need right now to feel supported in this situation? What what life ring can I throw you? Right? What how can I buoy you up in this situation? Right. So so these are ways that, that blue health coaching might support an individual in that type of situation. And it's not again, it's not just the language. But in my mind, I made that connection with if I were in the water in that similar type of situation, what would it be like? What could it be like? And how will that help my client? Vicki, go ahead. I to comment. I'm like, like itching. <laughs> I'm like birds under my seat. Um, no, thank you, both of you. I'm really enjoying this conversation. And man, I just... There's so much I want to talk to uh, you about as far as our speaker about. But also, um, Aurora, I want to just say that happened to me when I was um, snorkeling off the coast of Florida, beautiful um, coral reefs off the coast of Florida. And I look back and like shore is way, I, I had swum out so far and I didn't realize. And I, I did that little panic thing like, oh my gosh, I'm tired and I still have to get all the way back. And just um, like, like you were saying, just taking a deep breath and just you know, that fight and flight, you know, those hormones that are just raging and, and, you know, having, letting your mind help to control your body. But then, and then from then on, what, you know, what I've learned in coaching too, is taking that very next step, even though it could be a baby step. Um, just, you know, having, okay, 
a couple of strokes forward and, and having some, um, you know, you know, seeing some progress, though it may be small, and then just building on that. So it may be rowing to that island, you know, and having success there, and then building on that success, and then building on the next and on the next. So, um, but yeah, this, it's such, these are great lessons in life, right, that are around water, so. Hey, Vicki, thanks for sharing that, because um, after I got over getting out of the kayak, it, the purpose was to go snorkeling. And that's exactly what happened is we swam out, you know, probably a good 75 feet from the shore. And uh, I started seeing the waves pick up and I thought to myself, what in the world are you doing? And I, and I panicked again. I didn't say anything to my family. They were enjoying the snorkeling. And so I just very quietly got in my head and said, you can do this. You're going to be fine. You're going to live. Just paddle. Get yourself to the shore. <laughs> and I one, did. One paddle at a time. <laughs> yeah. But it was real. And I know our, our clients experience that. They may not be in the middle of the ocean, but they may be experiencing that in their life, especially as we're coming out of the pandemic and things are going to be very different for each and every one of us. So Shelly, I would ask you, you know, how you can continue to equip us with the power of your metaphors as people do re-enter the waters after they've come out of the pandemic, the tsunami. Yes, great question. Yeah, like you, many of my clients are already starting to ask that question, right? So how do we how do we prepare for this? How do we want this to be going back in? So I, I would say, you know, regardless of what the topic is, um, it's about helping your client discover those resources that are within them and using whatever language makes sense for them. So I have had conversations with the clients or again around what, what seems right to you and your team? What conversations have you had with your team about what would make them feel safe, you know, coming back into the workplace? And I, I mean, the conversations that we're, the conversations I'm having with people is, you know, what makes people feel safe? What do they need to feel reassured that every protocol is being taken that's necessary? And then the, you know, the, the leadership team is also looking for how do I, how am I reassured that things are happening that need to and that my people are being cared for. And so it's about, I think like with anyone in any context, it's about the conversations you're having with people around you um, and leading change and understanding what the needs are in the time of change. Yeah. So Shelly, one of the things that we had talked about is um, each person's connection with water. Do we want to go there and find out um, kind of around the virtual room, um, either in chat or off mic, uh, connection with water? I think that'd be great. We've heard a little bit. Um, but either way, what, what, what is your, your deepest connection with water? What part of water you know, kind of really resonates with, with you. Um, and, and, and I'll start. Um, I said briefly a little bit earlier that, um, you know, I've always been around water in some form or fashion. And um, right now, and really for the past several years, my water has been um, in the Gulf of Mexico. Not always the prettiest water, but um, it's definitely a view that um, is calming and soothing to me from um, the sunrise to the sunset that comes on and off and glistens off of the water. And um, I do what I would consider probably my most, um, my, my most deep thinking on the front of a, of a fishing boat. And my mind escapes to wherever I need to go, whether it's personal and where I need to take care of myself 
or I'll start brainstorming on what I want to do next in my business. I may think about a client. I mean, it's amazing. The, the, my biggest challenge that I have is um, I need like a scribe to, you know, for <laughs> my mind because I don't have, you know, a tablet or anything to write with. And, and you know what? If I did, I would lose the 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 brain power and just the escape that I am in with the thought, you know. But then I go back and I'm like, okay, what was that thought I had on, you know, this topic or that topic, and try to capture and remember some of just the energy that was going through my my mind and my body as I was thinking about things, just escaping from the world. Um, but at the same time, being so intimately and mindfully connected to whatever I needed to at the moment. And so that's, um, that's my water. Water's my life. Anybody else? Yeah. I can't be the only one. Everybody came here for a reason. Well, um, I'm also a water baby. I uh, grew up on the coast and it's funny because I don't really like the ocean water that much but give me a pool and I'm all over that but um, since I haven't lived you know in South Texas in a while uh, that close if I go and I just drive if I just see see the ocean see the see the beach my stress le levels go down but once I get out and go walk it's just like you know, it just, it's a, it's amazing what happens when that release just, just goes. And so everything just seems lighter or not as uh, heavy and just pressing down. And I will say on my daily practice or, you know, my self cares, I'm blessed to have a pool. And unfortunately it's only warm from like May to like September. So uh, there's a lot of maintenance, but I take a lot of um, advantage of it in the summertime and swim and just, you know, just stay outside and just watch it. I just love seeing what happens um, with the water and just how I feel in it. Just, I feel like things are doable. And I don't know how else to say it, but this feels more doable and manageable for my life. I actually have a follow-up question to what Lisa just mentioned, because I went from with, I was with her, she was in the water and she was saying to herself, it's doable. So something happens. You talked about the NLP, something happens in the brain. Tell us about what happens in the brain, Shelly. Okay. So I'm not an, <laughs> a neuroscientist expert. Um, but we know that there's a connection, right? We know that there is a, um, a shift. It's a, it's a mental and physical shift. And also it, the, when you, that first breath of sea air, typically in, in a normal, healthy environment, um, there are ions and um, it's a different quality of the air that you're breathing in. It's richer and, and it, activates the brain in a different way. Um, but even like you said, that, that first vis visualization, you turn the corner and see the ocean for the first time or the water, it doesn't have to be the ocean. Kids run out in the backyard and see the pool and go nuts, right? I, I mean, it's that same very positive attraction to water. So I'm not sure what happens in the brain exactly. The neuroscientists can tell you that, but we know that there is positive benefit from, from that. Now, corollary, if people have had a traumatic experience near water or related to water, you know, there might be an opportunity to work through that as well, because we know that there are cases where people had near drowning experiences or were always afraid of water. So it doesn't have to be the ocean. As, as Lisa mentioned, a swimming pool, a pond, a water fountain in your yard, um, a shower, right? A drink of water. Think about what drinking a glass of water does for your brain. First thing when you wake up in the morning, to, drinking a glass of water, it sort of cools off and activates everything. 
So there are a lot of biological functions that are supported by water, whether it's internalized or, or felt uh, externally or just visualized. Yeah, Shelly, I'll, I'll add to that. Um, I'm not a neuroscientist either. I've done this much. I do have a, a neuro leadership certification, so I know enough to be dangerous. But as you think about those type of things, I connect it back to everything that goes on in the limbic system. And all of those things that, that Shelly just said, it is that um, rush of dopamine that gets all of our um, neurons firing because it feels so good. But it's also that memory that's in your hippocampus from that traumatic event that could also get you going in the opposite direction and get, cause you to panic because of that memory of the water. And so I can't in any, you know, neuroscientific language explain to you what happens either, but there is that connection because of the fact that it is, um, it is, um, it's, it's even non-conscious. It's those things that happen because they're hardwired into your memory. And it can be that, you know, either the, the, the good or the bad. And um, I think a lot of times making that connection with the calmness is something that um, can, people can visualize, people can feel it, even if they've only experienced it just a little bit. But I do think Shelly brings up a really good point to think about, you know, is it more of a traumatic experience for somebody else? which it could be. And that, those are things that as coaches, we know we always have to be cautious about. Uh, Denise, hearing you talk about that, and Shelly, I'd like to get your, your thoughts on this, but what came up for me was that moment when I panicked in the water. And then again, when I was, um, uh, you know, when I, when I was just out there swimming, 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 swimming. And um, I haven't had bad experiences with water because I've, you know, I love water. I water skied, I jet skied, I wakeboarded. I mean, I've done everything in water. Um, I think what came up for me, however, is knowing that I've moved to another season in my life. And so seeing my children and then being able to identify, oh my God, I'm not done with life. And so the, I think the feeling of overwhelm of there is so much more that I can do here. And, and I think that subconsciously that great big water, body of water was like, you haven't even begun to tap into the potential that you have in this next season. That's what came up for me. So thank you, Denise, for bringing that up. No, that's great. Can I follow up on something too that um, I just experienced a couple of weeks ago, I uh, had to go, uh, visited Corpus Christi and um, I lived in that area for many years and I'm used to the bay. I, I just remember seeing the bay and every type of natural phenomenon that, you know, you could ever imagine hurricanes, just calm, beautiful popcorn clouds, all of that. And my uh, friend and I we were walking on the, on the bayfront and it, the, there was a norther, something was blowing through. So it was hard to walk because it was so like, ugh. And the water was so choppy. It was crazy choppy. But the most bizarre and beautiful thing about it was, was I guess the way the wind was, it just, it blew out all, all of the uh, stuff so that you could literally see Aransas Pass, Port Aransas, Padre Island. I mean, it was like, you could reach out and touch it. And I don't remember that many times in my life where it's been that clear. So there was that clarity. And then it was just so windy and just so choppy and so cold and like, Arr. so it was like these two different pictures and experiences. And I hadn't thought about it till, till just now, of like how much that was like, what was going on in my life that week was just like, oh, it's choppy, but it's clear over there, like crazy clear but it's still choppy. So I could see, I could see how this would be really beneficial in the coaching, in a coaching session. Cause there's, I could probably go and journal for about 30 minutes on, on that 45 minutes of me walking on the seawall because it was just, 
I had never seen it before. I never experienced it like that before. So that was that was quite fascinating um, connection there for me. So thank you for that. Thank you for sharing. That's beautiful. Vicki, you had a comment. Yeah, no, I, I again, I really appreciate this conversation. I, I think um, I, I'm a water baby also. And I think what ties, it's just happy times in childhood. Um, I had wonderful uh, opportunities growing up uh, to be around water, have very good experiences with it. My, my grandparents lived in Rockport um, and I just was visiting there just recently. And so lots of wonderful memories sailing with my grandpa. Um, and I do think about communities though that aren't, that don't grow up near water, um, that don't have those experiences or, you know, again, from their childhood, maybe they had some bad experiences. Um, and I know sometimes like the BIPOC, BIPOC community isn't represented as well in these activities. And I'm just curious um, if you have clients and, and, you know, that can, I guess, speak to that as far as, um, you know, not having those pos positive experiences around water, um, especially at an early age even. Yeah, that's really important part of the conversation as well. And I'm so glad you mentioned it, a as is connected to that, um, the preservation of our water environments, right? So taking care of being a good steward for these places that have so many rich benefits. Mm. So, and, and providing access to all communities. And so I, I would say, yeah, it obviously it depends on where you're located. Um, uh, and so I'll tell you, a moment, let me tell you about that. So told you born and raised in Northern California, the picture you saw previously was one of my favorite dive sites in Monterey, or in Carmel actually, um, at Point Lobos Marine Park. Um, I've recently relocated to Arizona of all places <laughs> to be closer to family. So the motivation is heartfelt and it's interesting. People continue to ask me, you know, Arizona, is it, isn't it going to be hard for you to scuba dive? And it's like, well, actually, I'm, I'm actually closer to San Diego and I'm closer to the Sea of Cortez. And by the way, I'm going to have a lake not too far. And to Lisa's point, we're building a pool too. So, <laughs> so right, we've got the water covered. But to answer your question about access, creating access for communities, I think that the, among the people who are um, involved in Blue Health Coaching, there's also this deep connection with water that we want to share this with other people. We know the benefits and the value of water. So how can we expand access? How can we create an opportunity or an experience? We can go for a walk by the fountain in the park. It, can, it doesn't have to be expensive access. It's you know, go be in a space that reminds you or provides access or that you can leverage. And again, whether it's a pond in a park or a fountain or along a river or um, using imagery like we've been describing, you know, showing a, an image in a virtual environment as well. Any of those can be really powerful. And just like you do with your, your client base, your audiences, you know, it's, we target our client groups, however we do, whatever our strategy for that is. And then collaborating with those entities and organizations and communities where, where possible, where you can. So there's, the beautiful thing is it's a free resource. It's a free renewable resource that we have access to. And, and this is an opportunity to expand that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What do others think? I'm curious. Uh, what, what do some of the people who've maybe not commented? How is this resonating for all of you? Well, you know, I can share some of that. My, when I met my husband, he brought a different perspective of water. Um, I've lived in South Texas most of my life. And for me, well, I had three years in Puerto Rico. So we had beach for, you know, three years, but mostly far away from that. But we spent our weekends up in Medina on the Medina River. So it's more like a blue hole, a small, I mean, Medina River is as small as rivers go, but it was a green oasis, you know, with big cypress trees around that on hot, you know, hot summer days. But when I met him, his thing is he loves what he calls big water. <laughs> he grew up on Lake George up in upstate New York, which was an enormous deep, deep natural lake. 
spent you know many of his, his summers basically living there camping on the lake um, and, and the ocean also anything big water so a lot of times for our travels we'll include something um, connected to big water like we got married on the beach in Hawaii um, we took a, a really wonderful trip uh, to New England a couple of years ago uh, Rhode Island and Maine just um, so anything that includes, um, and often when we travel, we look for a way to do a boat tour, you know, a tour from the water. So just for the different perspective. Um, so I've, I've recently printed a picture, one of his favorite ones from the Manhattan Beach Pier in California is one of our favorite places we've been several times. So just having the view of water in life, I think you're right. Just the view, the sound um, adds a lovely dimension. So. I'm looking forward to when we can do some more traveling and go get some more big water experiences. <laughs> so. Me too. Me too. Thanks for sharing, Leslie. And Vicki, I, I realized after we shifted away from you that you, you might have had another comment. Did you want to circle back to your comment? Um, I'm sorry, you're on mute. Sorry. No, I was just thinking that, yes, absolutely. There's water and there's ways to, to connect to water in our communities. And so taking advantage of that, um, working with, yeah, just the individuals that may not have access directly, whether it's through sw swim camp or, you know, just things like that so that they can have these positive experiences. Yeah, absolutely. That's yeah. wonderful. Well, I know that we're um, inching up along the top of the hour. And so Shelly, I wanted to give you an opportunity to um, let us know where we can find out more about Blue Health Coaching um, and any of that particular in information um, would be great. Um, and then I'll close us out with what's coming up next for ICF San Antonio. I got excited with dropping things into chat and I didn't unmute myself. So here we go. So um, thank you for the opportunity to share some resources. So I did put my website in here. I'm also going to provide you with a link to register and see the, um, or to learn more really about the training for Blue Health Coach Certification. It is an ICF recognized program. I believe it's 24 CEUs that you get for participating in the program. Um, it's experiential, it's a deep dive into Blue Health Coaching. And um, I, it, it pay, the rewards and dividends for this experience have been phenomenal. So my, my program was in Cornwall, UK. Um, but we're working to schedule a session in the U.S. as well. And so that's part of these, we're doing a series of sort of toe in the water sessions like this um, for coaches who would be interested in participating in a U.S.-based uh, workshop. So let me know, let us know, let Lizzie or Denise know as well. If you're interested in learning more and participating, um, we're looking to schedule something as soon as the world opens up again <laughs> and, and we're able to travel and, and deliver the program. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a little bit difficult for us to um, have timelines on, on those things these right. days. It seems like as soon as we can, and, and not many of us know um, when that can will be. But Shelly, I appreciate um, your time, your perspective, and all of the information around Blue Health Coaching. I know that it is a topic and a subject that is near and dear to me. Um, I'm excited. To, I think either Wednesday or Thursday, we're going to head down to the coast and have the opportunity to spend some time this weekend on the water. I'm hoping it's a little bit warmer, um, but we'll see um, if that is in our favor or not but I appreciate your, your time. And as I close this out, what I do want to remind everybody about are the um, series that we have throughout the year. And so we still have the Coaching Excellence Series, the Coach Connected Series, the Southeast Regional Webinars. So we have one of each of those coming up in um May, as well as the um, ICF San Antonio. So as we are, um, 
ICW that's sponsored by San Antonio. So we have um, the membership orientation that's also every month. These are our specific May events that we have scheduled. So Dr. Melissa Mahan is one of those who is with us today. She'll be doing trauma-informed coaching on May 11th. And then our Southeast Regional Webinar Series is on ethics on the 17th. And then for some detail around ICW, we have a week of events that we have planned for Monday, May 17th through the 20th. We'll actually kick it off on the 13th with an orientation for our Drive Pro Bono Coaching Program. And so that is our all-day pro bono coaching that's going to start on May 19th on that Wednesday. But it is a program that is going to continue. It is a launch that we have in conjunction with um, Joint Base San Antonio. And we are working to help um, individual men and women who um, were not successful in making it through basic training and who will be um, looking for their next opportunity either to stay with the Department of Defense or transition out of that and coaching these young men and women into the next chapter of their life is very important to us. So we're excited about that program. Um, but we will have such an awesome week with truly an international presence when we kick it off with Catherine Turneau from ICF France and Kavi Mir from ICF UK. So we're really excited about that. Tuesday, we go into a signature panel, which has um, business owner or business um, executives across Texas for a Texas event. Um, Wednesday is also the global ICF and ACMP partnership event reopening after COVID-19. We have our, our monthly or quarterly ICF um, ACMP Texas partnership which will be on Thursday over the noon hour. And then our social event. Um, we are going to go out in person. We don't know exactly where yet. We're still working on those details, but do rest assured that it will be um, um, with all of the precautions that we need to make sure we are all safe and protected with social distancing and um, all of the, the precautionary measures that we will take at that time. And with that, um, I will end our session for the day. I appreciate everyone's participation. The chat has been going crazy as I've been um, having my last few moments of um, announcements. And so I'm excited to see that all of you are able to contribute and add great value to the conversation. And I wish each and every one of you a beautiful toe in the water rest of your day. Thank you, Denise. Thank you, Shelly. Goodbye. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.